Order members, the next two motions are to approve statutory rules relating to the sea fish industry coronavirus fixed cost scheme. There will be a single debate on both motions. I will ask the clerk to read the first motion and then call the minister to move it. The minister will then commence the debate on both motions. When all who have uh, wished to speak have done so, I will put the question on the first motion. The second motion will then be read into the record and again I will then call the minister to move it. The question will then be put on that motion and if that is clear, we will proceed. Clerk, please read the first motion. That the sea fish industry coronavirus fixed cost scheme Northern Ireland 2020 be approved. I call the Minister for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs to move the motion. I beg to move. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed that there should be no time limit on this debate and I call the Minister to open the debate on the motion. Uh, Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. This scheme was developed in response to the unprecedented difficulties brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. It had an immediate impact on the sea fishing industry after social distancing measures and the collapse of the European and domestic fish markets made trading virtually impossible. The Northern Ireland fishing industry faced extreme difficulties as a result of COVID-19 and was in urgent need of support to ensure there was a profitable fishing industry to return to once COVID-19 subsides. I am pleased to say that my department responded promptly and engaged with the representatives right across the sea fishing industry to discuss the financial crisis it was facing. There was a clear need to deliver financial support within a reasonable time frame, and I subsequently brought a paper in relation to the sea fishing industry scheme to the executive and secured its support. So on the 3rd of April 2020, I announced a £1.5 million support package to ensure that the Northern Ireland fishing industry was supported through the COVID-19 pandemic until such times as market conditions improved. I'd like to thank the Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs Committee for its initial scrutiny of the scheme and its subsequent written engagement with my officials seeking clarification of some of the details of the scheme. The statutory rules which are subject of this motion give effect to this £1.5 million support scheme. The statutory rules were made an exercise of the powers conferred by Section 15.1 and 2 of the Fisheries Act 1981, as read with paragraph 2.1 of the Schedule 2 of the Sea Fisheries Act Northern Ireland Order 2002. Those powers provide the necessary powers to make uh, the schemes of financial assistance with the approval of the Department of Finance, to make grants or loans for the purpose of reorganising development or promoting the sea fishing industry or of contributing to the expenses of those engaged in it. The Assembly control provided for the paragraph 21 of the Schedule 2 of the Sea Fisheries Order, Northern Ireland 2002, provides that the scheme shall be laid before the Assembly after being made and shall cease to have effect after the expiration of the period of the three months, beginning with the day on which it was made, unless within that period it has been approved by a resolution of the Assembly. It is therefore important that this motion was scheduled prior to the summer recess and I thank the Business Committee for doing so. The Sea Fish Industry Coronavirus Fixed Cost Scheme Northern Ireland 2020 SR 2020 No. 76 was made on the 4th of May 2020 and came into operation on the 5th of May 2020. The purpose of the scheme was to provide assistance for the sea fishing fleet towards the fixed cost of vessels for the three months March to May. The assistance was delivered via monthly payments which were based on the length of the fishing vessel, Sub subject to qualifying conditions. Vessels less than 10 metres could apply for a grant of 1,050 per month. Vessels greater than 10 metres and less than 12 metres could apply for a grant of £1,800 per month. Vessels greater than 12 metres and less than 15 metres could apply for a grant of £3,550 per month. And vessels greater than 15 metres and up to 28 metres in length could apply for a grant of £4,550 per month. The maximum amount of funding per undertaking was capped at around £104,000, uh, but there were no vessels near that. To be eligible for support under this scheme, a number of conditions applied to ensure that support was directed to those vessels dependent on fishing and who were normally active during the months when markets had collapsed, and the vessel must be a fishing vessel 
registered in Northern Ireland. The vessel must normally be active during the period March to May. The vessel must have had fish landings of at least £10,000 in 2019. The vessel was less than 28 metres in length, and the vessel must be available to fish if there is a market for their product. The Department issued 172 letters of offer for support under this scheme, and to date grants totalling just over £1.3 million have been paid to 169 eligible applicants. So I am pleased that we were able to quickly issue a single payment covering three months at once to the vast majority of applicants. To sum up, when I announced the scheme in early April, it was the most far-reaching in the UK, and the same was to provide prompt financial support to help the, the fishing fleet to cover their fixed costs for three months and to help the fleet survive um, what has been one of its most difficult periods. We have succeeded in delivering just over £1.3 million in much-needed support to the fishing fleet, and the feedback that my department is getting from the industry representatives is that the scheme has been generally well received by fishermen and that the aims of the scheme have indeed been met. Thank you. I now call on the Chairperson of the Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs Committee, Declan McAleer. Thank you, Laskin Corlea. Um, I welcome the opportunity to speak uh, as Chairperson of the Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs Committee to outline the views of the Committee. The Committee first um, considered the original regulations at the SL1 stage on the 9th of April 2020 and it was advised by the Department for the need for the policy due to the collapse in the European and domestic markets for fish as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Hospitality and catering sectors had closed down, along with fish counters and supermarkets and other retail outlets. The markets uh, for much uh, of our seafood is overseas and had collapsed overnight. The sea fish industry was experiencing a major slump in demand for their product, and demand for fish and shellfish was non-existent. The Department advised that following consultation with industry representatives, the need for financial support for the sea fishing uh, fish catching sector in the wake of COVID-19 was recognised as a genuine and urgent need as many incomes had significantly been affected. The committee heard that under state aid rules, the scheme would focus on fixed costs rather than the income generated, and there were a number of conditions that had to be met in order to be eligible for the scheme. One of those conditions was the overall length of a fishing vessel. The committee was content with the merits of the policy at SL1 stage and had no issues to raise. Members were supportive of the measures being taken by the department to support the sea fish industry and, were and were, who were experiencing severe financial hardship as a result of the ongoing uh, pandemic. As meeting on the 4th of June, the committee was alerted to a minor technical amendment which was required following scrutiny of the technical aspects of the statutory rule by examiner of statutory rules. The amendment was to correct a reference to overall length in Article 2 of the, of the, of the rule. Subsequently, the Department presented the amended SL1 to the Committee on the 11th of June, followed by the SR at the meeting on the 24th of June. The Committee noted that the amendment was, as highlighted by the examiner of the rules, had no issues and had no issues with the policy. Therefore, the Committee are content with the proposals from the Department and recommends that both statutory rules are confirmed by the Assembly. I call William Irwin. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, this has been an important intervention of assistance, and I want to put on record my thanks to the Minister and his colleagues for their hard work in this matter. There has been a significant amount of effort put into this scheme, and within a relatively short period of time, and I know that this has been welcomed by the sea fishing industry in Northern Ireland. The cause of the crisis, as we know, is the COVID-19 virus, and as time has went on, we can see just how huge an impact this virus has had not only on the health of individuals affected, but also on our way of life and indeed economically on many businesses that operate within Northern Ireland. The sea fishing industry is no different in terms of the impacts felt economically. And with the closure of restaurants, seafood markets and many other outlets, it is very easy to see why the industry has found itself in such a perilous position. This crisis could not have been foreseen in terms of its impact when we consider the huge downturn in demand for, when restaurants and many outlets closed down. For fishermen, the costs continue for their trawlers, and this has been a concerning time for them all. And with all the sectors, it was recognised that something had to be done to ensure that there was a fishing industry to return to in Northern Ireland. Recognising this perilous position, our dear Minister was successful in gaining support for financial assistance 
for the, in the form of fixed cost scheme before the House today, and it has been a welcome intervention for trawler owners at this time. The scheme, while it's not an answer to all the current difficulties, has certainly provided some relief and important assistance to our fishing fleets who have been practically tied up since the commencement of the crisis. The uptake of the scheme has been encouraging and scores of successful applications, uh, as the Minister stated, meaning that assistance has been effectively administered uh, with minimal delay. The restrictions that were put in place were obviously an important measure, and there was a unique and concerning uh, pand- pandemic circumstances, and we all look forward to better days when our way of life can return to some sort of normality. I support the motion. I call Sinead Bradley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I rise as a member from South Down, who the home of Kilkeel and Ardglass um, harbours, and I want to thank the Minister for bringing this forward today, because it was very clear to all that the obvious slump in the market uh, for fish did require urgent attention, and this is it. I also thank the Minister for clearly outlining the process that was followed in terms of the requirement for the executive colleagues to come on board alongside the Minister for Finance to make this work, and it, and it really does highlight the need for collective responsibility to recognise where there's a problem to come together to fix it. Um, I want to also say that as a member from South Down, I have sought and acquired assurances from the department and officials that the amendment that will come up in the next piece is merely technical, and I understand that there will be no uh, change in the amount of payment due to those fishers. It was based on, I believe, a misquoted piece of legislation. So I am satisfied that that is the case and that fishermen and women across South Down and all across the North will be paid in due course the the right amounts that are due to them. So I stand to welcome this and support the motion today. Thank you, Chair. I call Rosemary Barton. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I too thank the Minister for bringing forward today's motion to retrospectively put in place the provision of financial support to those from the sea fishing sector, which I understand is in the process of being administered. While the second motion serves to determine the length of the fishing vessels, which would define the amount of financial support payable to these vessels. As no one here needs to be reminded, those working in our sea fishing industry do so in very challenging and dangerous conditions, which is often weather dependent. They are an industry that has suffered greatly in human loss over the years, and an industry that makes a very valuable contribution to the economy of Northern Ireland, particularly County Down. This industry, since the COVID-19 enforced lockdown, has seen its income plummet. The markets for shellfish, including that of prawns, which was one of the higher value catches and which was in high demand in the Far East, closed down virtually overnight. Then the collapse of the whitefish market due to the closure of the hospitality and catering sectors, along with the carry out food outlets here in the United Kingdom, further compounded on the difficult time for the sea fishing industry. However, meanwhile, costs to the fishermen continued. All this together resulted in an industry that, if it was to survive, needed financial support. This financial support was determined on several conditions, including the length of the fishing vessel, this, thus the need for the second motion. With the gradual opening up of restaurants and hotels once again, hopefully the financial package claimed by approximately 109 vessels will be a timely recovery, will be timely for the recovery of the sea fishing industry once again. I therefore, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, wish to support both these motions. I call Sinead Innes. Uh, Like so many other industries, our fishing communities have struggled to adapt to the severe and ongoing economic disruption caused by COVID-19. And indeed, few industries have such deep or culturally important roots in their communities than our coastal fishing villages and towns, such as Kilkeel and Ardglass in my own constituency of South Down. 
With demand for fresh fish heavily reduced and suppressed at home and in European markets, local fishing vessels and their crews needed emergency support. To make matters worse, we know fishing operations, especially smaller crews and vessels, often struggle to make, to make ends meet. Sinn Féin recognised that many crews have wages too that are insecure and often inadequate. In April, three months of support was secured to cover the fixed costs for operating these vessels, totalling some £1.5 million. By passing these technical legislative provisions today, we can ensure this support continues to be administered to those who need it most and when they need it. As we return to more normality in society and further increased economic activity, the hope is that this support will have kept those vessels in a position where they can return to normal business safely and in a more financially secure position. I support the motions. I call Harry Harvey. <clears throat> thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Minister. It is vitally important that we continue to recognise the hard work of not only our farmers but also our fishermen who have, throughout this difficult time, continued to provide local produce for our tables. The past months have affected every sector. The fishing industry has been no exception. As a Strangford representative, I know too well how badly affected the industry has been due to COVID-19. The collapse of the domestic and European fish markets made trade virtually impossible throughout the pandemic. This, coupled with the loss of labour and cash flow problems, created major challenges for our small fishing businesses and our fishing communities the length of the Arch Peninsula and elsewhere. I am glad the Department acted swiftly to announce financial assistance to our fishermen in the region of £1.5 billion. The Minister has been proactive in ensuring the Executive has assisted all our food sectors, and I thank him and his department for their work. Many fishermen are either self-employed as crew members or work as small businesses, and I know that a lot of the work normally available to them has not been there during the course of the pandemic. Supply chains have been disrupted, buying prices of fish have been affected, and there have been challenges getting products to market. Whilst the 1.5 million grant scheme will greatly benefit the industry in weathering the present storm, it is vital that the fishing industry is assisted to enable a safe and sustainable return to full operational capacity. Social distancing measures will be problematic in their implementation on board fishing vessels, and with much of the processing workforce having left the UK or unable to travel due to restrictions, there will be further hurdles to overcome in the weeks and months ahead. The UK fishing industry faces an uncertain future, first disrupted by Brexit negotiations and now the impact of COVID-19. It is of note that financial provision made thus far by the Executive is the most far-reaching scheme in the UK, covering co fixed costs for three months. I believe this represents a clear commitment to support our local fishing industry, and I know that this will continue. Thank you. I now call Emma Rogan. Uh, this is Ms Rogan's maiden speech, and I would remind members that maiden speeches should be heard without interruption. Ms Rogan. It's a huge honour for me to be speaking here today and speaking to you as the Sinn Féin MLA for South Down. I was honoured to continue the work of my party colleague, Chris Hazard, our South Down MP. He, is a fantastic, he was a fantastic representative for South Down as an MLA and as the Minister for Infrastructure and continues to be a breath of fresh air as our South Down MP. I thank him for his guidance and support since taking over from him. I would also like to acknowledge the 16 Sinn Féin councillors within my constituency that have offered their support to me and their hard work and dedication to our constituents. As one of two female Sinn Féin MLAs in South Down, I am extremely grateful to have the ongoing support and guidance from my party colleague and my friend Sinead Ennis. For anyone who has the pleasure of working or living or visiting in South Down, you will know it is a beautiful place on this island. It runs from Mourne Point and Carlingford Lock in the south, sweeping the mountains of Mourne, and runs as far as the breathtaking Strangford Lock, and all the towns and villages in between. I am proud of the people I represent. It's an area steeped in culture, heritage, and tradition. I pledge to work hard to restore services to our local hospitals and the, and the community it serves. This is the very least my constituents deserve. 
I recognise the hard work and diligence of the employees in the health and caring sector as they have battled to keep us safe in the strangest of times. I will continue to support small local businesses in our villages and towns. South Down also has many tourist attractions that the economy relies on, from St John's Lighthouse on the coast to the St Patrick Centre in Downpatrick. As the MLA for this area, I want to promote and support all that is positive about South Down. We also have a constituency with many excellent schools, teachers and pupils and parents will need help and support in the coming weeks to see our children back at school. Parents and their children deserve so much praise for completing the studies at home in recent weeks in the strangers of times, some with inadequate broadband and devices. To the parents of children with additional needs and special needs, I also hear your needs and I urge the Minister to secure more places in South Down. I have witnessed firsthand in the last few months how the community that I live and represent can work together and provide vital services and support to each other and for this I am extremely proud. As a border constituency, it would be remiss of me not to mention Brexit. The clock is ticking towards a potentially disastrous no deal crash out. The Brexit deadline should now be extended to avoid what, is, what will be a devastating blow to our economy. The purpose of both of the statutory rules is to provide financial support to those in the sea fishing catching sector and those incomes that have been adversely impacted as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Committee for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs previously agreed the statutory rules to make a minor amendment to the statutory rule 202076 in order to define the length of the overall of a, the overall length of a fishing vessel. There will be no impact to the administration of this scheme. Markets in Europe and on the Far East where, where high value shellfish would normally have been exported have been negatively impacted as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Furthermore, social distancing measures and the closing down of food industry sector and the closure of many fish counters in different retail outlets has resulted in the reduced demand for white fish and prawn tails practically wiping out this sector. The sea fishing industry is a significant industry, in particular within the three main East Coast villages, two within my own constituency in South Down, Arglass and Kilkeel, and on the Orge Peninsula, Port of Ogie. According to statistics, the sea fishing industry contrib contributes 40 million gross value to the economy in 2016 and employed 1,790 people in 2017, including catching and processing and marketing. These industries are key to rural communities like mine in South Down. It can be argued that there is a real need to ensure that they can be profitable and sustainable in the long term, especially with the context of the uncertainty around Brexit and the COVID-19 pandemic. In this regard, future fishery policy in the north of Ireland and indeed the island of Ireland will need to be conscious to the specific needs of these local industries. I support the motion. And I call Claire Bailey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, and I too would like to take this opportunity to recognise the devastating impact that COVID-19 has had on European and domestic fish markets and therefore the impact on the fishing industry here in Northern Ireland. And it is really good to see a package announced that is so substantially addresses these issues. This package will enable fishing communities to survive and hopefully thrive after one of the biggest challenges that they've ever encountered. However, I do have concerns in relation to differential treatment between sectors and disparities in levels of support that have been allocated. This is without doubt the most substantial package that has been announced for any sector within the department's remit. And indeed, as the minister has stated himself, the most far reaching in the UK. And while this is undoubtedly welcome, questions must be asked as to why this sector has been treated differently in comparison to others. The recent separate 25 million support package announced for the agriculture and horticulture sectors um, was intended in the Minister's own words to be driven towards those who can clearly demonstrate tangible losses as a result of COVID-19. Beef and sheep farmers have, like those in the fishing industry, been affected by the falls and fluctuations in market demand for their product due to the pandemic. However, unlike fishermen, beef and sheep farmers must demonstrate proof of their losses in order to access supports, and the amounts that they receive is dependent upon those losses. 
For the fishing industry, a lump sum has been allocated for distribution, with the only significant criteria being the size of each boat. Of course, the fishing industry differs from agriculture, and supports for the sector appear to have been treated differently based on this justification. However, I would like to draw attention to the ornamental horticulture sector, which has been lumped in with agriculture for the purposes of allocating a support package, without consideration being given to the fact that it differs totally from both agriculture and fishery sectors. The horticulture sector has arguably been affected the worst out of all these sectors, yet the level of support it has received is nowhere near that that has been accorded to the fishing industry. The sector has experienced catastrophic losses, and yet criteria for schemes such as self-employed income support scheme, the coronavirus job retention scheme, the bounce back loan scheme, all excluded growers from being able to benefit from them in many cases. According to the Horticulture Trade Association, less than one in five growers received help through the government business support measures. Just 1% received financial support from the government's coronavirus business interruption loan schemes. 48% of growers were ineligible to get assistance to loans as they had no cash flow. And over three-fifths of UK growers said that they were not eligible for business support grants, while nearly four in five growers were not entitled to any kind of rates relief. No allowance so far has been made in the support package for horticulture to account for this or to allow for the fact that the industry does not receive any annual subsidy from public funds, which all other sectors do. The perishability and seasonality of plants means that the sector has faced stock write-off unlike any other industry. Growers have waited weeks and then months with little to no cash flow and no indication of whether a package would be forthcoming until now. Many growers were not in a position to order plants, which must be ordered and paid for a year in advance, as they need to be propagated. And many were not in a position to buy stock for autumn or winter. Can I bring the year. member back to this particular legislation that is being discussed today? Through this package for the sea fishing industry, a precedent has been set for supports to be made available that were not calculated based on the proportion of losses incurred. Given that the Department has been able to provide for the sea fishing industry with this lump sum financial package, with the only criteria being the size of the boats, it is not unreasonable then to expect that similar standards be applied to other sectors who have experienced more severe impacts due to COVID. And while I support today's motion, I am calling on the Minister to apply eligib eligibility criteria for all applicants within his remit and that that is done equitably. Thank you. I call John Blair. Thank you. Uh, I rise briefly on this occasion to, to support the sea fish industry scheme as announced today. Uh, already uh, during the debate, the, the benefits uh, and outworkings of the scheme have, have been well rehearsed, and I don't intend to repeat them, but I think it should be on record that the Department, uh, and I know this from the Dairy Committee, has worked hard to try and alleviate the impacts of COVID-19 on the fishing industry and the impacts that have been seen already to, to, to the detriment of that industry in relation to markets for shellfish, whitefish, prawn tails, and of course that further compounded by closures in the hospitality and retail sectors also. It's probably worth mentioning, in addition to the points already illustrated, Deputy Speaker, there is also from this scheme uh, a beneficial uh, I output for the towns and villages and the economies of the towns and villages closest to the centres of our fishing industry. And of course, those benefits relate also to other livelihoods in those towns and villages. So on behalf of Alliance, I'm very happy to support the scheme. Thank the Minister for the statement and the detail given today, and also thank the departmental officials for what has been delivered on the scheme thus far. And I call on the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs, Edwin Putz, to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. I thank the members for their contributions to the motion. And, uh, throughout this pandemic, my officials have continued to meet on a weekly basis with industry representatives from right across the areas that we cover to discuss the implementation um, of um, the support schemes and, more recently, um, what future support might be required uh, for this particular in industry in the, in the months ahead to assist it to recover. So I can inform Ms Bailey that um, not only have we provided support for the fishing industry, 
um, but we will be looking um, to provide further support uh, through EMFF funding, and that those discussions um, continue. And let me be very clear about, about this. If anybody wants to look at an industry that has been in decline over the course of the last 30 years, you just need to take a drive around our fishing harbours, and you will see um, the many boats which are in a very poor condition because those people haven't been bringing in the amounts of income uh, which has allowed them to reinvest in the way that they should. And as we look and go forward and we look at the challenges that face us, and we are looking at substantial <coughs> redundancies, we've already witnessed it in the likes of Thompson Aero, Bombardier and others uh, making announcements, for example, um, in the aeroplane sector. And we look at a town like Kilkeel, and one of the biggest employers is uh, the, 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 the facility which makes the aeroplane seats. And that will be a real challenge in that town um, if there are job losses in that, because they are well-paid jobs, and it is a very good uh, sustainable industry up to this point. And if that town is affected, how does it respond? And one of the areas that it can respond is a recovery in the fishing sector. And I believe as we go forward, we need to support and sustain the fishing sector uh, so that it can provide more jobs, it can deliver investment into those communities and create both offshore and onshore jobs um, in towns like Kilkeel, Port of Oakey, and indeed Art Glass. And in respect of the horticulture sector, it is an entirely different sector, so you are not going to produce a similar scheme. But we are supporting that sector, and we are supporting it, I believe, um, quite well in terms of the funding that is set aside. We have sought to assess um, the losses that have affected that, that particular industry and will respond to that. I would also say I fought very, very hard to get garden centres opened once again. That decision uh, to open garden centres has been one uh, which people can now easily recognise to be the right decision, because first of all, the R number did not go up as a consequence of it, and many people who enjoy gardening had the opportunity to go and acquire plants which have been grown by the horticulture, uh, orna ornamental horticulture sector and avail of, of, of that and help support those businesses. That was the most single um, individual thing that we could have done to support that sector, but it is not the only thing. And we have identified funding for it uh, and will support it. But getting back to the motion, uh, because that is what today is about, and Ms Bailey's uh, intervention was really a little distraction. In recent weeks, a significant number of vessels, particularly those which catch uh, nephrops and whitefish, have returned to their fishing operations on a managed basis. And as more of the restrictions are eased across the hospitality sectors, some of the markets for fresh sea fish um, are beginning to reopen. But even as things stand, I believe that they are currently only around a quarter of what they would normally be. So a lot of the fish that is being caught is being frozen, and that is fine. That is that, that, that's, that's what happens in that industry. But it is not being frozen at a high price, and therefore the importance of support for the fishing industry is absolutely critical. And as I said in my opening remarks, the aim of the scheme was to provide prompt financial support to contribute to the vessel's fixed costs for three months and help the fleet to survive, which has been one, uh, through one of the most difficult periods. I do not believe this scheme has been one which has been um, you know, providing more than, 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 than what the, the fishermen needed. Uh, so We are looking at support which was reasonable, uh, given the circumstances, which allows fish f uh, vessels to go out and catch fish um, at a point where, where the, their, their returns are lower, but sustain, sustains some of those fixed costs that they have on the vessels. So I, I think that the scheme has delivered and has delivered very well, um, and I uh, welcome the support that we have received today from right across the House. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Members, the question is that the sea fish industry, coronavirus, fixed cost scheme, NI 2020 be approved. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. 
We'll now move on to the motion on the sea fish industry coronavirus fixed costs amendment scheme, which has already been debated. I'll ask the clerk to read the motion. That the sea fish industry coronavirus fixed costs amendment scheme Northern Ireland 2020 be approved. I now call on the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs to move the motion. I beg to move. The question is that the sea fish industry coronavirus fixed costs amendment scheme NI 2020 be approved. All those in favour say aye. Contrary no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. I would ask members to take their ease for a few moments.